Hi, this is Morgan. Uh, if you subscribe to my page, you probably were there for uh, uh, some of the geothermal experiments that I did with my uh, dear old greenhouse that I built on the side of the side of my house with uh, PVC pipe and plastic sheeting. I had a neighbor next door who was trying to sell the house, and uh, rather than do the do the right thing and just come over and ask me to take it down, they uh, uh, first called the cops, and when that didn't work, they called the uh, building department, who uh, strong armed me into taking it down. So it's been about uh, six months since I had a greenhouse, but uh, with winter kind of uh, in the air here in Denver, um, decided to build a small lean-to greenhouse um, out of wood. Um, off of my existing screened-in patio, so it's uh, I had trouble keeping the the PVC greenhouse uh, warm, and uh, want something that's basically much simpler design, much more robust to the weather. Um, I'm hoping because it'll be close to the house, it'll be warmer. Um, I don't want to put doors on it, so I can actually get in through the patio through the big windows. Um, it's a much smaller space than I had before, so I'm hoping that uh, <clears throat> with a reasonable amount of energy, without putting 10,000 BTUs, I can keep this sucker uh, warm during the, especially during the winter, and keep it cool during the summer. Uh, my wife wants to sit on the patio and not have it be, look like a look like a junkyard, so I've got to be uh, careful to make sure the aesthetics are, are preserved. Um, I actually implemented a simple drip irrigation system with a really cheap uh, off-the-shelf submersible pump. I think that you'll find that cool. So let's, I'll try to go fast. Let's get into it. Okay, so here's the structure kind of in framing mode. Uh, I am not a carpenter, so please don't take uh, uh, take this with a grain of salt. Um, the structure is about seven feet wide, about four feet deep, roughly six feet tall. It is. Um, somewhat attached to the house, but I see I've, I've got a brick wall at the base of my, my patio, which is on the other side of the greenhouse, um, screened in patio. Uh, I'll get about five degrees of pitch on the roof, which is probably not enough for a real heavy uh, snow load, which we do get here in Denver. So uh, fingers crossed that uh, because it's only four feet wide, it's not going to be a big problem, but uh, it, it might be. <clears throat> Here's the some of the supplies I use for it. I mean, these are, these are kind of just like as a guideline. Um, just simple premium two by fours. I didn't go with uh, two by sixes or heavier construction. So this is not a load bearing structure. Um, the building inspector would not be any happier with me if he saw this. I use uh, uh, plastic sheeting to cover the roof. Uh, as you'll see, I don't cover the sides with that plastic sheeting. I'm not using UV resistant plastic sheeting. And you know, truth be told, this area only in the winter time gets about maybe three to four hours of direct sunlight. So I don't. I think I'll be okay at least for a few years with, with just a simple, cheap plastic sheeting. Um, one important thing is something called batten tape. Um, that is when you want to staple <coughs> um, plastic sheeting to, uh, to, a, to a wood structure like this. Basically all it is is kind of like a nylon strap, and you just put it over the top of the uh, plastic sheeting and then staple gun it down. What it does is it distributes the load of the when the when the plastic sheeting pulls, it doesn't it tend to rip out. Very important part. So here's a view from the inside of the greenhouse, looking up at the roof. And notice how I've got essentially um, uh, one a couple cross members in there. Um, so hopefully that's enough to keep the snow load at bay. And then you can tell I actually did put uh, the translucent plastic sheeting over the uh, over the roof. Here's a view from inside the patio, looking out. Um, as you can see, it's not, not terribly unsightly for somebody sitting on the patio entertaining guests. Um, you notice I've got uh, the, the windows from the patio to the greenhouse are actually, um, I took the screens out and basically have, as you'll see, um, uh, thermal um, window film. Very clear. It's typically used for indoor purposes. I've used it very, very uh, nicely to keep this patio warm during the winter time. And I'm gonna use this for my greenhouse. Um, you know, when you have, you need double layer plastic film to get that heat insulation uh, during the winter time. Now, if you had twin layers of, of polyethylene um, translucent sheeting, you'd only be getting probably 60 to 70% uh, transmission of light through the, through the window. So I'm not in a really, I'm not, I'm light is at a premium here, so I think I'll, I'll find that this is a very good solution. I'll show you how I made the windows later. Okay, so actually, um, 
rather than just put window film right on top of the um, greenhouse itself, I actually built window frames like this. So essentially, you've just got uh, uh, one by three furring strips. I just use simple um, zinc plated steel uh, corner braces like these, very cheap. One important thing is to put a cross member in the middle. That that keeps the uh, something that's maybe five six feet tall like this. There's going to be uh, sort of bending in the middle as I stretch a window film over this to make a to make a, uh, um, a two sided window. So here's another view of the actual window with the film on it. It's actually got film on window film on both sides of the uh, of the window. I use uh, uh, f here's the products I use here. I've got uh, f window film mounting tape. That's good for you. basically it's double stick tape. You stick it down on the edge of the frame, and you can pull it taut, um, uh, pull it taut, pull the window film taut onto the frame. And then I like to use masking tape around the edges of it just to, just to hold it down, especially if I'm going to be pulling it in and out of the uh, greenhouse frame. And then um, you can get bulk uh, 25, 25 by 7 feet of Thermwell uh, shrink window film shrink kit um, off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, a lot cheaper than the so-called window film kits that you, you find uh, at Home Depot, for instance. And you know, you don't have to use a hair dryer on this. You can, you look at the, you look at the picture on the right and uh, basically um, that's just stretched taut with tension. There's no uh, hair dryer. If you want to make it perfect, you just, you run a hair dryer over it and it actually shrinks the film down. But I find that that's, that's sort of unnecessary unless you're, you're really anal about the uh, 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 smoothness. Here's just a zoom on on how I attach the uh, the furring strips to form the corners of the, of the window frame. Again, I'm not a carpenter. This is not heavy duty construction. Having the uh, the cross member and the window film on there actually holds the uh, holds the whole frame kind of in in compression and keeps it together. So here's the uh, the greenhouse after I've uh, got it framed up and I've put the window the, the window frames on here. And you can see I've got uh, two window frames in the front and I've got two going back to the patio. Um, our sunlight comes from the south at about that angle during the middle of the winter. So that's what I'm trying to do. Get, some, get sunlight, get as much sunlight as I can through the clear, very clear, you know, 90% uh, transmissivity of that of those front windows rather than uh, double-sided translucent polyethylene. Okay, so how are we going to keep this thing watered? Um, you know, I don't have a door on this on this uh, greenhouse, and I'm not planning on in the winter time trudging in there, stepping on the plants, and then uh, watering it every every day or so. So I want some sort of automated system. But the problem is in the winter time, our sprinkler system's not running. So I've got to have a, a robust, simple system. I think you'll be uh, if you if you try this, you'll be really pleased with it. I'm I'm a big fan of drip irrigation in general. Uh, drip is fantastic for getting a small amount of water exactly where you need it onto your plants. You don't waste a lot of water, very flexible. But rather than use a typical sprinkler system, um, I'm actually going to use a submersible pump. So here's here's what I bought off of Amazon um, last year. 12 bucks, the thing draws 10 watts and it'll, and it'll pump 100 gallons per hour, which is, which is, which is ample. Um, this unit works with uh, 3 8 inch vinyl tubing. So if you've, if you've ever used uh, drip irrigation, they, they typically run off quarter inch, and I'll show you how it's, it's possible to use it anyway. So you can see the unit here, a picture on the right, I've got the submersible pump buried down in, the, in, in a bucket. We've got flow out of the submersible pump into the greenhouse, and we've got return flow that I'm holding in my hand here. Um, so basically, the nice thing about this system with, with the uh, drip irrigation, these, what you see on the right there is a, is a uh, uh, half a gallon per hour dripper. So basically, you just you know, drill a little hole in the vinyl tubing and jam that thing in there. It's got a shark bite uh, that holds it holds it in, and uh, <clears throat> does a fantastic job of of just being able to uh, get drippers in there without using an actual drip system. Kind of a hack. So I've got the water supply. Right now, it's in a in a couple of five gallon buckets. I can already tell you right now that uh, I'm going to need a, a larger reservoir of water, probably a, at least a 30, 40 gallon uh, 
gallon reservoir. But you can see for illustrative purposes, I've got the sump pumps down in the in the buckets. And essentially, you got water running out into the uh, greenhouse, uh, dropping off at the drippers, and then on, it basically just makes a big loop and comes back into the bucket. And uh, so it circulates the water, and it's it's losing a little bit of water just through the drippers. It's definitely easier to refill a system like this. Uh, which is actually in the porch during the winter time, so I'm not trudging out in the snow and trying to open the windows of that greenhouse. I can just do all this uh, from inside the porch. So here's a view of the uh, greenhouse. I've got the windows on. I've got a piece of translucent plastic sheeting against the uh, the far side of the greenhouse that's against the brick wall. No light comes in through there anyway. Um, you can see how the um, how the so that's it. I'm uh, I'm totally stoked to finally have a uh, a greenhouse that I think is going to work both for winter and for summer. Uh, I hope you found this uh, useful. So what am I going to do going forward? I need to. This is right now. It's it's August uh, August 29th. So we're still technically in summer here in Denver. Um, when we when we're in the winter time and we're well below zero in Fahrenheit, I need to get all the drafts sealed up for that thing. Um, if you check the description of of this video, I'll give a link to my uh, uh, the vertical earth tube geothermal system that I implemented for my other greenhouse. I think it's a great flexible system for either cooling or heating. Um, all you got to do is you, you basically dig holes with a post hole auger, circulate air, cold air or warm air from the greenhouse down into the into the underground uh, well, basically, and uh, just the natural um, temperature moderation of the earth will cool or heat the air in any, any conditions. Uh, I'll probably put a space heater in there just for emergency heating, and I, I do need to implement some sort of a uh, gutter, and it would be nice to collect rain as well. But uh, anyway, uh, please post comments if you have questions, and I'm sure I've left a lot out, and uh, maybe I'll post another video if, if you find uh, there's something I've really missed. But uh, thanks for your time.